In 2013, Devil's Claw harvesters, which currently consist of 21 organized groups countrywide, managed to harvest 104 tons of this plant, raking in about $2.5 million directly into their pockets. Because of the magnitude of harvest and the direction the Devil's Law sector is moving into, better organization is critical, says stakeholders. The Devil's Law industry tried many times over the past few years to put in place a structure to better organize the local sector. Finally, today, the Namibia Devil's Law Exporters Association is launched. Namibia is the largest exporter by far of Devil's Claw in the world. Um, it's found in Angola, it's found in Zambia, it's found in Zimbabwe, Botswana, South Africa. But on average, Namibia exports about 400 to 450 tons on an annual basis. And we haven't really been organized, and as a result, we've been often at the mercy of international buyers who um, play exporters off on each other, don't see it as an organized industry, and therefore take advantage of it. The Sun community is known to be closely linked to this special herb. For hundreds of years, the Kalahari Bushmen used the devil's claw for medicinal purposes. Our task is to see from here, from an exporter level, that what we can gain overseas if we can gain more, that is the benefit that we can actually give down the supply chain. But I can assure you that there are, um, I know of three conservancies which do have a lot of some people in them and they are already benefiting greatly from also the MCA initiative and through them being organized. And I think it will be part of our task to support these organizations to keep them stable and to keep them competitive as well. The trust currently consists of permanent exporters which include Kamaku exporters, Ecoso Dynamics and pro cumbens exporters Namibia. Some of the members come from backgrounds with more than 100 years of Devil's Law exporting experience. Francho Olafir reporting for the news on one.